Hello everyone. I've had some mail come in over the last couple weeks here. Most of it is from Amazon, but there's a couple things that aren't, so I figured I would put together a mail goodies video. And because I haven't posted a video in a while, this seemed like a relatively easy one to edit and get back into the flow of things. So let's begin. I think I'll start with the smallest item first. Okay, first up here we have a little yellow envelope. Now I do know what's inside this envelope and I know who sent it to me. You can clearly see that it's going to have something to do with electronics because they used Kapton tape on the, on the envelope to seal it. Of course the Kapton tape doesn't actually do much because the envelope has one of those sticky seals to it. So I think I'm still going to end up cutting it open, but I'll cut it open nicely maybe. So this one was sent in by somebody I know. It wasn't really sent in for the mail goodies episode, I just figured I would throw it in here. Okay, there's a bag. Components. It's got a few inductors and a few diodes. Resistor, some capacitors. Three LEDs. These are, I believe, color changing LEDs. And then three of these little chips here. YX8018 chip and this should be a 4 pin solar charge controller for stuff like garden lights. This is a solar panel as you can tell. The interesting bit is actually these circuit boards. So this circuit board is different. This circuit board is a little breakout board for a ATtiny13 I believe. It's got a header slot for the ISP header, it's got a switch, pull down resistor, battery connections, LED connections, very hefty ground plane. I could imagine it'll come in handy if I start playing around with my little AT tiny chips that I have. So you can see that this is just a board for that solar controller so that it can drive an LED. Solar controller chip is here, solar cell, battery, just a standard nickel metal hydride battery. Uh, the inductor goes across here. Diode, capacitor, and the LED. As well in the middle here, there's a spot marked out for where it is safe to drill through if you want to put mounting holes on here. These were his first circuit boards he's ever designed and got made. All in all, the solder mask and everything looks really good on these. I don't know if you can see. The printing is certainly very clear. Pretty darn good, I would say. Let's continue with the envelopes. This is a much bigger envelope. This one is from Amazon. Well, that didn't work at all. From Amazon, it is a GeekFun Electronics Hourglass board blu-ray i don't know why it says blu-ray maybe just because the leds are blue soldering practice kit however this one has a couple chips on it lots of resistors lots of leds weird little led board doesn't come with any instructions i assume these two boards snap together so that it can stand upright assemble it and see how it works. Looks like it has a CD4015BE2 and a CD4069UBE. So I think the idea is that you can flip this over and it will start counting down. Next we have this box here from Universal Solder. A resistor color code cheat sheet card. Hmm. It's kind of neat. Thank you for your purchase. In case there is anything not perfect, get in touch with their customer service. For data sheets, drivers, sample code, all that good stuff, visit their website. Just two Arduino Nanos. 
for the different Christmas trees. I don't know if these come preloaded with the sketch on them. If not, that's easy enough to upload later. And these are basically just little Christmas tree kits that I didn't know existed until way after Christmas. Otherwise, I would have bought them before Christmas and put it together and used it as a Christmas tree topper. Seems like it might actually work pretty well if you could mount it to the top of a Christmas tree. The suction cup is for the top of the Christmas tree so you can stick it onto a surface and have it play. I think looking like 12 LEDs on the board. It has a little buzzer for playing music. And the Arduino Nano plugs right on the back here. This one comes with a potentiometer so that you can increase or decrease the speed of the music and the LEDs blinking. So I decided to buy from this company again because I bought the hookup wire from them and the hookup wire is really good so I figured it was a good price, may as well continue buying from them. Last time what I got was some tin copper wire, this time I got magnet wire. They do have really good deals on hookup wire on Amazon but they're sold out right now so I might even consider getting some hookup wire at some point. But they definitely seem to be a decent company to buy from. I didn't really know what gauge of magnet wire I needed, so I'm hoping this will be correct. Suppose I will find out when I use it. Some more geek fun stuff. This time we've got some reed switches. The reed switches are going to be paired with the magnet wire. So I'm going to hopefully make a battery I guess capacity meter out of a clock and I need these in order to make that all work. It's very similar to one that Big Clive put together in one of his videos so I figured I would follow his example because that looks very handy. Small office home office switch. All metal. It's just a Netgear 8 port switch. I like Netgear networking equipment and this was a super good price. Big sale from Amazon. It was one of their deals. One of their daily deals or whatever they call them. I ordered one of these bench power supplies. Uh, it's one of these cardboard boxes that splits the moment you open it all the way. The user manual. Wow, that is, that is very small. So on the 5D one here, it's 0 to 30 volts, 0 to 5 amps. A standard computer power supply cable. Alligator clips that say 5 amps on them, but I don't know if you would want to put 30 volts at 5 amps through those. It's in a Ziploc bag. AC 110 or AC 220 and of course it's got the little switch there for switching it between 220 and 110 and I'm thinking the first thing we'll do in the review video is actually open it up take a look at what's inside here's something Interesting. We've got a screw right here with some metal underneath it. Could possibly be a grounding screw, grounding the outside of the case to something inside. Or it's a tamper protection screw so that they know when people open up their unit. The biggest complaint I've seen on this unit is that this rear fan can be extremely noisy and that it can fail fairly quickly so we'll have to check and see if that's a DC fan or an AC fan I'm hoping it's just a standard DC fan aside from that it's just banana jacks on the front power on off button current knob voltage knob says 
push find slash course. So I assume when you push this in, it will change it from being fine to course or vice versa. Push and hold to lock, unlock, push and hold OCB on off, over current protection on off. Interesting. It's got the nuts so that you can put a piece of wire in there if you want to use it that way. I think this will come in extremely handy. It's something that I've been wanting from my bench for a while is a variable linear power supply and that's what this is supposed to be. I don't think this has any protective film on the front of it. It's disappointing. It's got some scuffs and scratches on the front. So I hope you guys enjoyed this mail goodies episode. I know it wasn't too terribly long or too terribly interesting, but we've got some projects we can work on now and some other interesting stuff that I have planned. If you did enjoy this episode, be sure to give it a like and to share it. Every like and share really helps out a lot. If you want to see more videos just like this one, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 250 subscribers, which is just amazing. You guys are all awesome. I look forward to continuing making videos for you guys. I hope you enjoy them. And if you have ideas or comments, be sure to leave those in the section below or tweet them to me or email them to me. Any of those things work equally well. I try to reply to every single comment that is posted on any of my videos. Hopefully I'll have another video posted for you guys soon. If not this week, then we should be back to our regular two videos next week. Terrius Talks Tech on Tuesday and Tinkering with Terrius on Thursday. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.